I worked in a whiskey distillery for eight years before I entered, and one of the men I worked with up in uh, the tank room said to me this one day, you're not getting any younger, you better either marry one of the guys you're dating or go to a convent. And I said, well, Smitty, I don't know a thing about a convent. I said, we never had anybody in Lynchburg, you know. He said, we have some good sisters in Freeport where I live. I'm from Johnstown originally, and we had a very active forensic uh, team there. And I started with forensics the first day I was there. It was one of those things you could sign up for. I signed up, and that first weekend, I went on a tournament. And so I've been talking ever since. And the, the nice thing about forensics is it gives you an opportunity to just learn different ways of speaking, not just one way. And so I did all the different things, but the thing I loved was debate. About maybe a week and a half later, one of the girls who worked up in our office said, you know what Smitty was telling you about? She said, I'm taking those sisters, two of them from Freeport, down to their mother house. Why don't you just ride along and you'll get to meet the sisters? I did. And when we got to Baden, the sister said to me, we'd like you to meet our mother general. Would you meet her? I said, oh, sure. So I went in and we talked a while. She said, you ever think of entering the convent? And I said, no, I don't know a thing about a convent, you know. And she said, well, I think you should enter. She said, so I'll have two, two dresses ready for you in September. So have somebody take you down. When I was thinking about what I was going to do after high school, I thought first, maybe I'll go on Broadway, because I love to sing and dance. Go on Broadway, do that, and then maybe I'll be a, maybe I'll be a lawyer. And I, there was something else, I don't remember what the third thing was, but going to the convent was not on my agenda. Um, and then it got close to the end of my senior year, and I had not, I sent out the, um, you know, the, I took the, the college boards, and then it, when you had to send the, the uh, results someplace, I said, oh, send them to Pitt, send them to St. Francis, because St. Francis was close to Johnstown. And then I asked the guidance counselor, who happened to be one of his sisters, I said, well, where do the sisters go to school? And she just kind of looked at me, and she said, well, they go to Mount Mercy. I said, send them there, too, because I had signed up for every retreat that they ever had at school. Never went to one, but I signed up for them. <laughs> I was number 11 out of 13 children. We lived on a farm, had no electricity, no running water. So it was an easy life for me to get here. I went down and asked Sister Rosemary Rank. I said, who do you write to? Or what do you do if you're interested in entering the community? And she looked at me and she said, well, you write to Mother Beninga. I sat at my desk, wrote the letter right then, put it in the mail on the way home. And then I thought, okay, I did that. <laughs> Okay, I took care of that, and I went on with my life. And, you know, about a few weeks later, I got a, a letter from Mother Benigna asking me if, to come down to get a physical, that if I passed the physical, et cetera, I was going to be accepted. And I thought, ooh, <laughs> this is getting serious now. When I uh, knew I was going to Brazil, one of my brothers had been a Navy Air Force pilot, and he said, you know what, he said, I hear that they they have planes down there, you know, in Brazil. So he said, how about if I pay for your lessons? And he did, so I got my driver, I got my pilot's license. But when I went to Brazil, I never flew down there because they didn't have any landing areas. We would have to land on the water. And I never, you know, I hadn't uh, learned to land on water. I came and took the physical and was accepted and then I just put it aside for a while because I, it was one of those, you know, when you're, you, you're drawn to something but it was not something I was sure I really wanted to do. And in those days, it was, I was going to be going into a community where we were a full habit and I, I'm always hot <laughs> and I thought, oh, I don't know if I can do that. But there was no question in my mind of the community that I would settle because I, I was taught by the sisters from first grade on and uh, we lived not far from the, 
from the school and the convent, and I so I, I got to know, and I had piano lessons there, so I was very familiar with the sisters. It's a good place to uh, help people, and that's what a lot of people like to do nowadays. You know, to help other people, to become good friends with them, and um, and then you have that good friendship the whole time. As I said, faith and the, and the Catholic Church were integral to my life, and um, it's, it, again, it was what fit. I saw these women who were teaching me, but who, who exuded a sense of, I mean, they loved what they did, number one. Uh, they showed love by their very demeanor, by the way in which they taught us, the way in which they treated us, the way, and so there was, so the faith was very much connected with the, the religious people that I saw. I didn't always agree with them, and sometimes, you know, we, we would have these discussions, but it was, the, the faith was integral to who I am, and it fit.